Dear brothers and sisters, this week we have remembered the Lord Jesus beginning in the most holy place in heaven, beginning the judgment, the investigative judgments. And the Seventh-day Adventist Church continues to preach the three angels' messages. The, the book of Revelation calls us to worship the Lamb, to follow the Lamb, to worship the Lord Jesus, the Lamb of God that was slain from the foundation of the world. But there is another power, the first beast, that will receive worship by, by the whole world. And for that reason, this coming election of the United States of America is very important. Why? Because the United States of America is currently forming the image of the beast. The image of the beast, the United States will dominate the world religiously. The United States will form the image of the beast and it's already doing it. According to the Bible in Revelation chapter 13, verse 11, talking about the second beast, the United States, and I beheld another beast coming up out of the earth, and he had two horns like a lamb, and he spake as a dragon. Why he has two horns? This is the United States, because it represents a government. There is a republic, and there is also I, a democracy, and not only that, it is, it is a, it is a, a Protestant nation. So the two horns represents there is a democracy, a republic, without a king, and also there is Protestant without a pope. But this nation exercises all the power of the first beast, the papacy. Revelation 13, verse 12. And he exercises all the power of the first beast before him and causes the earth and them which dwell therein to worship the first beast whose deadly wound was healed. So we are seeing the fulfillment of prophecy. The United States is already speaking as a dragon, is already forming the, the image of the beast, union of church and state, and bringing the papacy into full power again. Revelation 13, verse 13, and he does great wonders so that he maketh fire come down from heaven on the earth in the sight of men. Now the question is for us today, should a Seventh-day Adventist person, a Christian, vote for any president in the world? And we will see what is taking place because any president that is elected in the United States will indeed form the image of the beast and will also make it by force the worship on the first day of the week, so that all will worship on Sunday. And this is what the Bible calls the crisis of the mark of the beast. So according to the spirit of prophecy, we cannot participate in, in voting for any president because all the presidents follow the agenda of enforcing Sunday as a day of worship. This paper says Christians flock to Washington to pray for America to turn to God by electing Trump. They want Americans to turn to God by electing Donald Trump but they do not know that this is an agenda from Satan that all people should, should become spiritual, should become spiritual in that sense, becoming like, a, like Christian. And indeed, they want to introduce 
the agenda of the papacy to bring about the image of the beast and also to uphold one religion upon another. This is called supremacy, to make one religion greater than another. And this is to, to also bring about papal supremacy. Every year they celebrate a dinner, a dinner, a commemorative dinner for, for a Roman Catholic that passed away who was the first candidate to become president in the United States, but he was never elected. His name is Al Smith. And the, and the Cardinal in New York, they, they organized a dinner. And before the United States elections, they invite the candidates of the two major political parties. And this has been a tradition for many years. But for some reason, Donald Trump was the only candidate that was present in this dinner. And for Roman Catholics, this would, would mean to be disrespectful on the part of Kamala Harris. But there is an agenda. There is the agenda to, to make one person more popular than the other. And in this case, Donald Trump, so that he will receive more votes from the Catholics and many other Protestants. So this paper reads, Donald Trump accuses Kamala Harris of being deeply disrespectful to the great Catholic community for not physically attending the Al Smith dinner. So this is what Donald Trump said. But as I said, this is an agenda. In Revelation chapter 13, verse eight, the word of God tells us, and all that dwell upon the earth shall worship him whose names are not written in the book of life of the lamb slain from the foundation of the world. Imagine the Pope commands that all European Union presidents and prime ministers come to Rome, come to the Vatican, and they obey. And now the whole world, the United Nations, wandering after the beast. So all that dwell upon the earth shall worship him. Whom? The papacy. Shall worship him in obeying the religious law, religious mandates so that all religions together and all governments together, and they will enforce all the dogmas and all the doctrines of the, of the Roman Catholic papacy. So imagine all the world will worship him, but not the people of God. Those whose names are written in the book of life, they will not worship him they will not receive the mark of the beast. They will not worship on Sunday. In the book, The Great Controversy, page 445, we read, the image of the, to the beast represents that form of apostate Protestantism, which will be developed when the Protestant churches shall seek the aid of the civil power for the enforcement of their dogmas. So the civil power will enforce the Roman Catholic traditions and doctrines and dogmas. And this is the image of the beast. Apostate Protestantism that will be developed when the Protestant churches shall seek the aid of the government to enforce religious legislation. And in this, we see an advancement by the present candidate, Donald Trump. Donald Trump honors Virgin Mary's birthday on social media platforms, social to social. By honoring Mary, he is upholding, promoting, encouraging people to venerate, 
to honor Mary also. And this is a Roman Catholic dogma. And who is behind this agenda? The papacy. And this is the image of the beast taking shape, being formed. There is a religion behind the movement of the governments and also, the, in this case, the political candidates. Trump courts Christian votes and says, God saved me for a purpose. There is a purpose, and that purpose is to follow and wander after the papacy and to also bring about the Sunday law crisis. It says during an event in, in North Carolina, built as an 11th hour faith leaders meeting, a series of conservative pastors warned, uh, warmed up for Trump, including Guillermo Maldonado, an apostle and longtime Trump ally who cast the election in perilous terms. So this is called the 11th hour. But according to the Bible, there is an 11th hour when the people of God will be proclaiming the fourth angel's message, the three angels' message and the fourth angel's message before the coming of our Lord Jesus. But God's people should not be involved in political agendas. Here we have this news, he says, introducing Trump, Ben Carson. Who is Ben Carson? He is a Seventh-day Adventist. He is a neuro, neuro, neurosurgeon. He is a doctor. He is a Seventh-day Adventist. And yet, he is involved in politics. He says, introducing Trump, Ben Carson, the campaign's national faith chairman, for the 2024 election, openly rejected the idea of secular society. So he, he has been presenting that church and state should be hand in hand, who should be united. And this is against the, the word of God. This is against the Bible. So he says that there has to be a religious society. He doesn't, he doesn't want a secular society. And then he says, this election is about whether we are a secular nation or one nation under God, said Carson, echoing the aims of Christian nationalists who view the United States as a Christian nation that must return to God. So here we see a nominal Seventh-day Adventist preaching against the word of God the word of God says that the church has to do church stuff and the government their things. It says, my faith took a new meaning on July 13. This is Donald Trump. He says, in, in Butler, Pennsylvania, where I was knocked to the ground, essentially by what seemed like a supernatural hand said Trump, and I would like to think that God saved me for a purpose, and that's to make our country greater than ever before. Greater than ever before, meaning to make America Christian. But indeed, not just Christian, but to form the image of the beast, and to make Americans and the rest of the world worship the first beast whose deadly wound was healed. He says, he touted his decision while in office to move the U.S. Embassy in Israel to Jerusalem, which was widely condemned by world leaders for threatening to inflame tensions in Israel and Palestine. I said, we are going to do exactly what a lot of people didn't want me to do, Donald Trump said. And Donald Trump 
has an agenda that is not completely fulfilled. He has an agenda in Jerusalem with Israel. He has an agenda for the papacy. He has an agenda for the Sunday law. So there is an agenda that he has to continue. And for that reason, the popular vote counts. And you will see him praying to, to Mary or praying to angels. And in this case, praying for the dead. President Trump marks October the 7th with prayer visit to all hell. He says the, re the Rebbe's all hell is the most visited Jewish holy site in North America, growing people from all walks of life in a way similar only to the Western Wall in Israel. It is common for people to visit all hell to pray in proximity to a personal or professional milestone. And in this case, the election, the United States election. Visiting the resting place of the righteous is a long held tradition in Judaism. Remember the two things that will unite the world, Sunday as a day of worship and the belief that when people die, they continue living the immortality of the soul. He says the Talmud recounts how Caleb visited Hebron to pray for the Ma'arat Hamakpela, the cave of the patriarchs, the resting place of the Bibli biblical patriarchs and matriarchs. So resting places of Jewish mystics and sages in Israel and Europe are considered sacred spaces and have been visited by Jews and non-Jews for many centuries. So Donald Trump pre praying and, and praying for the dead. This paper says Latino voters lay hands on pr and pray for Trump as they shower him with religious gifts during Miami visits. So the Protestant America already pray praying. And not only that, this is this is also forming the image of the beast. He says Latino leaders pray for God to help former president make America godly again. And this paper also says Trump joins prayer for holy and warrior angels to help make America godly again. How? That's the question. The, the ex-president Donald Trump was surrounded by voters who put their hands on him while praying for holy and warrior angels to help him make America godly again. And he received a gift. This is the gift that Donald Trump received, an image. Attendees also showered Trump with gifts. One of them was an art piece of the Virgin Mary by Mexican actor Eduardo Brestagi. So Donald Trump is pursuing an agenda to make America great again, to make godly again, to make America Christian again. But he received this gift, an image, uh, uh, an image that is idolatry. And he has already been honoring Mary. This is honoring one religion. He has been honoring the dead invoking the dead, the spirits of the dead, honoring the dead. And now we see that the religion that will dominate America and the whole world is the religion of the papacy. This, pa this paper says, pray for Donald Trump to win the 2024 election in a landslide. So people are praying for him 
that he will win in a, in a, in a landslide. In Councils for the Church, page 316, we read, the Lord would have his people very political questions. We cannot participate in voting for any politician. It says, on these themes, silence is eloquence. Christ calls upon his followers to come into unity on the pure gospel principles which are plainly revealed in the word of God. We cannot with safety vote for political parties. Full stop should be, we cannot with safety vote for political parties for we do not know whom we are voting for. We cannot with safety take part in any political scheme. We cannot. We cannot be involved in politics. And in this case, we cannot with safety vote for political parties. Why? Because we do not know whom we are voting for. And we cannot with safety take part in any political scheme. Remember, the whole world is wandering after the beast. This paper says Trump promises a revival of Christian power in speech to national religious broadcasters. Revival of Christian power, and not only this, but also revival of Roman Catholicism. This paper says Trump signs order seeking to allow churches to engage in more political activity. The union of church and state, the image of the beast. This is when he was president, but this agenda is still marching on. He says Trump needs our prayers, but not our vote. Yes, indeed, the Bible calls us to pray for, for, for the people in power, in government, civil authority. We must pray that many of those who work in government will receive the truth of light, the truth of the gospel, the everlasting gospel, and repent that they will come to the Lord Jesus and acknowledge the supreme God of heaven. Even as Nebuchadnezzar king repented, we must pray for people in power, in governments, so that they will accept the Lord Jesus as the only God that can save, can save us. This paper says Trump pitches faith leaders in North Carolina. How? He says Ben Carson, who serves as the Trump campaign's director of faith outreach, said the 2024 election will decide if we have a secular nation or one nation under God. So Ben Carson, the Seventh-day Adventist says, this election will decide whether the American nation will become a, a Christian nation. And we know what this is tending, where, where this is tending, is tending to make America Roman Catholic again and make the Roman Catholic papacy supreme over all religions. So Carson, who while running against Donald Trump for the 2016 Republican nomination, questioned the sincerity of Trump's faith, defended Trump during his speech mon on Monday and he, he said, unless Jesus Christ is on the ballot, you're always choosing between the lesser of two evils. This is what ben, ben Carson said. But this is exactly what the Pope has been saying, that you must choose the lesser of two evils. And in that case, he's, he's, um, he's acknowledging that uh, the Roman Catholics should should vote for Donald Trump. The second second selected messages, page three hundred and thirty six. We read, "We are not as a people to become mixed up with political questions. 
all would do well to take heed to the word of God. Be ye not unequally yoked together with unbelievers in political strife, nor bind with them in their attained attachments. There is no safe ground in which they can stand and work together. The loyal and the disloyal have no equal ground on which to meet. So this is a message for Ben Carson, who is a Seventh-day Adventist. And this is a message from God, stay away from politics. Stay away with politicians. God's people have been called to proclaim the three angels' messages, not to proclaim the supremacy of the Roman Catholic papacy. Remember this picture, the Twin Towers? Revelation 13, verse 13 says, this is the second beast, and he does great wonders so that he makes fire come down from heaven on the earth in the sight of men. And this is the nation that deceives the whole world. This is the nation, the, the United States, that deceives the whole world in every particular to establish the Roman Catholic hierarchy as the supreme power in the United States to bring the papacy again the, in the United States. And the United States will no longer be a Republican, but in that case, a theocracy. A theocracy under the, the supreme leadership of the papacy and the supremacy of the papacy. Revelation 13 verse 14 tells us, and deceivest them that dwell on the earth. This nation was able to bring fire from heaven, destroying two twin towers and deceive the whole world. And deceivest them that dwell on the earth by means of those miracles which he had power to do in the sight of the beast, saying to them that dwell on the earth, that they should make an image to the beast, which had the wound by a sword and did live. In the book of Great Controversy, page 145, it says, when the leading churches of the United States, uniting upon, upon such points of doctrine as are held by them in common, shall influence the state to enforce their decrees and to sustain their institutions, then Protestant America will have formed an image of the Roman hierarchy and the infliction of civil penalties upon dissenters will inevitably result. Persecution, persecution is coming, my brothers and sisters. Church and state will combine to enforce Sunday as a day of worship. And for that reason, this uh, American uh, election, 2024 American election is very important because they want to continue the agenda of making the United States of America surrender, surrender themselves to the authority of Rome, to worship Rome, to wander after the beast. It says President Donald Trump visited National Shrine, uh, shrine of St. John Paul II, and he knelt down in reverence to the body of, of the dead and also invoking the dead. In, it says embracing religious themes. Trump visits John Paul II, uh, his shrine. And just recently, it says Trump invokes St. Michael the Archangel in the secular left house. He invoked an angel. And according to the Bible, we cannot do that. We can only pray to the Father. We cannot pray to an angel. We cannot pray to a, to a man, to a human. We cannot pray to Mary because that's blasphemy. That's, um, 
that's going against the word of God, deviating from the truth. In Matthew chapter 6, verse 9, we read, After this manner, therefore pray ye, our Father which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. When we pray, we do not pray to people or to dead people or to angels. We, we pray only to God. This is a, a, a lesson for all politicians to acknowledge the word of God only and to obey God rather than men. This paper says Trump's prayer to St. Michael sparks speculation about Catholicism conversion. He says Trump's prayer also sparked speculations of a potential conversion to Catholicism, further fueling intrigue about his religious beliefs. Remember, this is the image of the beast, the image of the beast, the political power, the civil, civil power, already sustaining the institutions of the Roman Catholic Church, already sustaining the traditions, the doctrines, the dogmas of Roman Catholicism, praying to the angel of the Roman Catholic Church. And not only to this angel, but to Mary. He says, Trump invokes patron saint of far-right Catholics. He says, Trump's post wasn't random. He made it on the Catholic feast day of St. Michael, the archangel. Additionally, it actually marked the second time in September that Trump made a social media appeal to Catholics. Three weeks earlier, he had posted an image of Jesus' mother, Mary, with the caption, Happy Birthday, Mary. In the Catholic Church, some and some other traditions like the Anglican Communion, September 8th is celebrated as Mary's birthday. Ironically, the Mexico bashing political a po politician posted a Mexican image of Mary. So Donald Trump posted the image of uh, the Virgin Mary. And remember, he received that, that image in, in, his, in his political campaign. In 1 Timothy chapter 2, verse 5 tells us that we can, we can have no other mediator other than the Lord Jesus. We cannot have Mary as mediator. And this is a message for those who are still in the Roman Catholic Church. It says, for there is one God and one mediator between God and man, the man Christ Jesus. There is only one God and one mediator, the Lord Jesus Christ. This paper tells us Donald Trump post prayer to St. Michael in observance of the feast of the archangels. And, and they invoke this, uh, this angel. But interesting enough, this angel is not one of, of those angels in the Bible. And according to the Bible, there is one archangel, Michael, but he represents the Lord Jesus because we will read in the Bible, Michael means the one that is like God, that is equal with God. So this prayer that Donald Trump posted is a prayer that dates back to 1884 when Pope Leo XIII introduced a group of prayers into Catholic liturgy. Prayer to St. Michael became a part of the Roman Catholic Mass at a time when geopolitical instability in Europe threatened the sovereignty of the Holy See. So what do we see here? Donald Trump invoking the Saint Michael. He is invoking the, the, the geopolitical stability for, for the Vatican. He is also promoting Roman Catholic doctrine and upholding the dogmas and institutions of the whole of the Holy See or the Vatican. This paper says reporters invokes why is Trump 
pleasing about the Virgin Mary and Saint Michael. And this paper also gives us some, some uh, understanding. It says, Saint Michael is regarded as the defender of the Catholic Church. And is often depicted as a spiritual warrior and a leader in the fight between good and evil. So this Saint Michael, Michael is the defender of the Roman Catholic Church. According to Revelation 13, verse 2, it says the dragon gave him his power and his seat and the great and great authority. So who is this Saint Michael? This Saint Michael is the dragon. Why? Because it's, he is the defender of the Catholic Church. And who gave the authority, the power, and the seat? It says it is the dragon who gave him the power. In many other traditions, they also invoke this Michael, this Saint Michael. It's a Sunday of worship to Saint Michael the Archangel. Catholic parishioners and devotees celebrate the feast of the leader of the heavenly armies. And he says, according to, tr to traditional Dominican magic and voodoo, so magicians, witchcraft, uh, witches, and the religion of voodoo, they also invoke the Saint Michael. He says, according to this traditional Dominican um, uh, Dominican Re Republic, magic and voodoo, which although they have points of coincidence, also seem to have and to follow different routes. The figure of Saint Michael is used to combat all kinds of evils. This other paper says festivities of Saint Saint Michael or Saint Miguel, patron saint. Synonymous with Santeria, this is another religion, Santeria, uh, rum, drinking alcohol, tobacco, and drums. He says, in this, in this central world neighborhood, the belief in Saint, Saint Michael or Belly Belkan began due to the influence of the first black slaves brought to Santo Domingo from Africa who in their need to worship and believe, defended those spiritual attributes from the attacks and threats of the colonizers, and they emerged with new faces and nicknames. This paper also says devotees celebrate St. Michael's Day today among candles, flowers, and tobacco. The celebration is divided into two, religion and santeria. Just as the church is packed during the service, the surroundings also appear filled with santeros, practicing mysteries and believers of the 21 divisions of Buddha. So this is Saint Michael in uh, this one. This Saint Michael is indeed witchcraft, invoking of spirits. Here in Indonesia, we have the, great, the book, The Great Controversy. But it's interesting that in The Great Controversy that we, that we have, this is the, um, the hardcover Great Controversy. In the, in the first pages, they have this, this, uh, this portrait, this picture the picture of the Saint Michael of the Roman Catholic Church. This is in, in the great controversy in, in the Indonesian language. And it's int also interesting, interesting that in this great controversy book in Indonesian, there are some paragraphs that are missing from the original in English. For example, these two paragraphs are missing from, from the great controversy in, in Indonesian language. So when, when you see this picture, in some aspects, they are, they are portraying the idea that this is a Roman Catholic book, 
But it is not. This is a Seventh-day Adventist book that talks about the in imminent second coming of our Lord Jesus and against worshiping the, the beast and his image. So this is one of those paragraphs missing. According to the Great Controversy, page 388, it says, the spirit of worldly conformity is invading the churches throughout Christendom. Robert Atkins, in a sermon preached in London, draws a dark picture of the spiritual declension that prevails in England. The truly righteous are diminished from the earth and no man lays it to heart. The professors of religion of the present day in every church are lovers of the world, conformers to the world, lovers to preacher comfort, and aspires after respectability. They are called to suffer with Christ, but they shrink from every reproach. And then he says, apostasy, apostasy, apostasy is engraven on the very front of every church. And did they know it? And did they feel it? There might be hope, but alas, they cry, we are rich and increased in goods and stand in need of nothing. This is missing from the great controversy in Indonesian language. And remember, this is a message for the Laodicea church. This is a message that says apostasy, apostasy, apostasy is engraven on the very front of every church. Why these apostasies are in, in our church? Acts chapter 20, verse 29 says, For I know this, that after my departing shall grievous wolves enter in among you, not sparing the flock. There is infiltration. There is Jesuit infiltration. Remember Ellen White's dream. That night I dreamed that I was in Battle Creek looking out from the side glass at the door. And so I company marching up to the house, two and two. They looked stern and determined. I knew them well and turned to open the parlor door to receive them. But I thought I would look again. So this is a company marching to her house and she knows them, why? Because they were members, members in the church. And then he says, the scene was changed. The company now presented the appearance of a, of a Catholic procession. One bore in his hand a cross, another a reed for praying, Roman Catholic prayer. And as they approached, the one carrying a reed made a circle around the house, saying three times, this house is proscribed. The goods must be confiscated. They have spoken against our holy order. The books must be confiscated, he says. And then terror seized me, and I ran through the house, out of the north door. And I found myself in the midst of a company, some of whom I knew, but I dare not speak a word to them for fear of being betrayed. So this is indeed how all these things happening. Why? Because there is apostasy. There is infiltration. There are Jesuits infiltrated our institutions. My brothers and sisters, a great war is coming, but Michael, the real Michael, the Lord Jesus, will stand up for his people. He says, Daniel chapter 12, verse 1, And at that time shall Michael stand up, the great prince which standeth for the children of thy people, and there shall be a time of trouble such as never was since there was a nation even to that same time. And at that time thy people shall be delivered, everyone that shall be found written in the book. Remember, according to Revelation 13, verse 8, 
All that dwell on the earth shall worship the beast. The papacy. But only those whose names are not written in the book of life. But here there is another group. Those whose names are written in the book of life of the Lamb. Them shall receive the protection of the Lord Jesus. The Michael. Who is this Michael? Jude chapter 1 verse 9 says, Yet Michael the archangel, when contending with the devil, he disputed about the body of Moses uh, and says, There's not bring against him a railing accusation, but said, The Lord rebuked thee. Who is this Michael? Is the Lord Jesus who resurrected Moses. The Lord Jesus, this is Michael the archangel. He resurrected Moses. Why Satan was disputing the, the body of Moses? Because the Lord Jesus had not died yet. And, and Satan was arguing this body belongs to mine. This is, this is a body that sinned. Uh, and he was disputed, but this is Michael. He resurrected uh, Moses. And then it says in John chapter 5, verse 39, search the scriptures. For in them you think you have eternal life, and they are they which testify of me. So when we read about Michael resurrecting Moses' body, it means the scriptures testify of the Lord Jesus as Michael also. In 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verse 16, we read, For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel. This is the Lord Jesus. He is the archangel. He is the one that has the voice of the archangel. And he's coming with the trumpet of God. And the dead in Christ shall rise first. But in Revelation 12, verse 7 to 9 says, And there was war in heaven. Michael and his angel fought against the dragon. And the dragon fought against his angels. And prevailed not. Neither was their place found anymore in heaven. And the great dragon was cast out, that old serpent called the, the devil and Satan, which deceives the whole world. He was cast out into the earth, and his angels were cast out with him. Satan always wanted to be worshipped, but worship is only due to the Lord Jesus. In Revelation chapter 12, verse 11, talks about who is this Michael, says, and they overcame him by the blood of the Lamb, and by the word of their testimony, and they loved not their, their lives unto death. He says in Isaiah chapter 14, verse 12, Accor uh, according to the word of God, Satan wanted to be worshipped, but he's an angel. He has been created. He says, how art thou fallen from heaven, O Lucifer? Son of the morning, how art thou cut down to the ground, which this weaken the nations? For thou hast said in thine heart, I will ascend into heaven. I will exalt my throne above the stars of God. I will sit also upon the mount of the congregation in the sides of the north. I will ascend above the heights of the clouds. I will be like the most high. This is Lucifer that wanted to receive adoration, worship by other angels. He wanted to be like the most high. The Bible says in the great controversy, chapter 613, at that time shall Michael stand up, the great prince which standeth for the children of thy people, and there shall be a time of trouble such as never was since there was a nation even to that same time. And at that time shall thy people be, be delivered, everyone that shall be found written in the book. And the third angel's message closes. It says, when the third angel's message closes, mercy no longer pleads for the guilty inhabitants of the earth. Remember, in the book of Hebrews, chapter 1, it says that when the Father introduces the Son, he says, let the angels of God worship him. Why? Because the Lord Jesus is God. 
He is the real Michael. He is the Michael that is the one that is like, like God. But Satan wanted to become like God, wanted to be worshipped. In the book, the great controversy continues saying, when he leaves, this, the, the Lord Jesus, when he leaves the sanctuary, darkness covers the inhabitants of the earth. In that fearful time, the righteous must live in the sight of a holy God without an intercessor. The, the restraint which has been upon the wicked is removed. And Satan has entire control of the finally of the finally impenitent. God's long suffering has ended. The world has rejected his mercy, despised his love, and trampled upon his law. The wicked have passed the boundary of their probation. The spirit of God persistently resisted, has been at last withdrawn and unsheltered by divine grace. They have no protection from the wicked one. Satan will then plunge the inhabitants of the earth into one great final trouble as the angels of God cease to hold in check the fierce winds of human passion, all the elements of strife will be let loose and the whole world will be involved in ruin more terrible than that which came upon Jerusalem of all. My brothers and sisters, we need indeed the presence of the Holy Spirit with us. The presence of the Holy Spirit, the presence of the Lord Jesus, we need to follow the Lamb wherever he is. May God help us, may God bless us as we continue to prepare for the second coming of our Lord Jesus. Let us pray. Our Father in heaven, we thank you for blessing us with the precious message of truth. And we pray for your protection upon this message and for your blessing for our brothers and sisters, my brothers and sisters in this world. And thank you, dear Father, because Michael standed for his people, the Lord Jesus, our Lord. We pray in his holy name. Amen. May God bless you, my brothers and sisters. Until next time. Amen.